Hi, one of the most interesting features in MeshLab is the fact that uh, it's possible to deal with uh, images and uh, uh, align the images on the 3D model and also project the color information in several ways. So in a uh, MeshLab project there is possibility to have a 3D model but also images that are loaded as raster layers and they are associated to camera parameters. So uh, in order to align an image on a 3D model uh, in the previous uh, uh, release of MeshLab, there was a uh, uh, motor information filter that was able to find the uh, registration using, using the motor information. Uh, for this uh, release, we decided to uh, add to this part also the possibility to set some correspondences because the motor information is not working all the time. So uh, we added the possibility to uh, set up uh, uh, some correspondences and use the correspondences together with the motor information or by themselves to uh, make the image alignment. So there is a new filter which is actually a new tool uh, which is uh, this button here which gives you the possibility to make the registration of the images in a more advanced way. So first of all you need to put yourself in the raster visualization mode and when you click on this button you have this new dialog here uh, the idea if you want to use this tool as a pure motor information like the filter that can be found in the filters camera which has already a, a tutorial for that then you all you need to do is first of all you click the ask button so that now you can position the 3d model in a more or less uh, aligned position and then if you click apply motor information and you didn't set any kind of correspondence it's clearly only the motor information will be used to make the alignment so uh, the use of the rendering mode the optimized focal and all these parameters are the very same as the one that you will find in the filter so if you want to use the pu pu pure motor information you can use this uh, um, tool or the, the, the filter uh, and uh, it will work exactly in the same way, so uh, the use of these parameters is uh, very well uh, described in the other tutorial. So if I just put my 3D model in a more or less aligned position and click the motor information registration, and you see that you, we have a, a decent alignment, I can try for example to estimate better also the photo focal length, and being this the, uh, um, a method that uh, uh, tries to fi find a convergence, if I apply it several times, uh, it may be possible that I have a better alignment. And that's it for the, the plain use, uh, is exactly the same as the motor information filter that you find in filters camera. But there is also a possibility in the case that uh, the pure motor information is not working, and this can, can happen in several cases. Uh, so, for example, if your 3D model is not describing what, uh, what is uh, uh, depicted uh, in the image or uh, well in some cases the motor information is not working fine so it's not converging at the best uh, alignment of the image one way to try to overcome this is to set up some correspondences and uh, use them as constraints to have uh, uh, the, the perfect alignment so this tool gives you the possibility to do that so here you can create new correspondences by setting uh, 3D points and corresponding 2D points on the image and use them to make the alignment. Uh, the filter is quite easy to be used. So first of all, you have to put yourself in the navigation mode. So you will have the, uh, the possibility to move the 3D model. The best thing to do is to try to put it quite well aligned with respect to the image anyway. And then once that you add this, if you click on add new point, you see that a new correspondence has been created. And then essentially, if you select the correspondence you want to work with, and then you click on pick current point on model if you double click in any position on the 3D model you will see that uh, a correspondence, a point will be set with the 3D coordinates and if you do the same by clicking on pick current point on image I'm using the, the wheel of the mouse to change the transparency and switch between the 3D model and the image and I try to pick the very same point on the image like this 
and you see there is a point here and the corresponding coordinate on the image. Uh, so the idea here is that you have to set uh, a few correspondences. My suggestion is to set at least uh, four uh, because if you use it with one or two the motor information is uh, would try to do its best, but it's better to set uh, three or four constraints that clearly uh, should be uh, like well distributed among the 3D model if you want to have the best of the alignment. So I'm just creating new correspondences. So I pick the current po the point on the model, like here for example, and I pick the corresponding point on the image, like this. Uh, you have to be actually as careful as possible. So uh, mm, for example, using Windows or Mac, there is this magnifying glass uh, uh, tool provided by uh, the operative system that could help you, like in Zoom, in the part where you can want you, you, where you want to set the correspondences. So I'm just let me just uh, set third correspondence here with the corresponding point here, and uh, maybe one point. here with the corresponding point here and let me just pick a final one uh, like here okay. here we have here we have now five correspondences set on the 3d model on the image so the idea is that uh, if you are picky, clicking this uh, uh, button here, uh, the, the tool will try to make the uh, alignment by using both the correspondences and the motor information. So the correspondences will be used like constraints to uh, set uh, the model in a, in a certain uh, aligned position, but then the motor information will try to refine it in order to get the best alignment. And this slider essentially helps you in uh, uh, having a, a more or less uh, contribution by motor information or correspondence. This means that if you put the slider on this side, even if you have correspondences, pure motor information will be used. And if you put the slider on the other side, like this, the alignment is obtained only by, use, by using the correspondences. So even in this case you have a, a, a certain convergence and you will see, you see here that uh, the arrows are changing, but you're using only the correspondences. Every time that the slider is in between the two, and the best position is like this, then you will use both the correspondences and the motor information. So, let's see. So the, the uh, alignment is not uh, the best, actually. So if I use both, let's see if things improve a bit. Yes, slightly. Clearly, also in this case, you can help the, the, the tool to conver converge better. still not working that fine so what can I do now is for example is to add a new correspondence like here at the end and pick the corresponding point here so that I can really drive the alignment to the best uh, final result well using the correspondence here gives you also a, a feedback about the quality of the single correspondences so what you read in the last column here is essentially the uh, reprojection error that you will obtain with this uh, uh, alignment. This means that if you reproject the, the 3D point on 2D, uh, this is the distance in pixel between the 2D correspondence and the reprojection of the 3D correspondence. Uh, this can be useful because um, sometimes you may spot some correspondence like this one, which has a quite big error with respect to the others, that maybe is a correspondence that is not as hasn't been set in a very good way and this is this one and uh, one thing that you can try to do for example is to make it inactive so if you make this correspondence inactive and you launch the alignment again what is done now is that uh, the alignment will be done by taking into account all the other correspondences that you will see are improving quite a lot and using again the motor information so here we have a better alignment for example we can play a bit with the correspondences and so on so playing also with the different correspondences is possible to have a better alignment so in this case, even in with very difficult cases where the motor information is not working fine, the more accurate correspondences you set, uh, the, the more you will be able to guide the perfect alignment. It takes a bit more of time, but now you're really able to handle any possible case of alignment. So 
simply if you cl close this uh, tool you will have this uh, camera parameter associated to this image uh, currently uh, you cannot directly save the correspondences you set for this alignment so it will be nice sometimes to be able to save these correspondences and load them in a second stage if you want to refine them or check them so that's why here you have the export or correspondences to file in this case you will have the possibility to save the correspondences you set for this image to a simple textual file that essentially contains uh, a short description, sorry, a short description of uh, the correspondences you set, the one, the, the information that you find in the in the mesh lab too. This means that if you, even if you close this uh, uh, tool and you do other stuff and then you switch back to the image and you want to see that again, clearly if you, when you launch again the, the filter, the correspondences are lost. But if you just ask to reload the correspondences, you have them back and then you can go on and refine and so on. So this is a way to save the information that you uh, created uh, to make the alignment. Uh, and then the other things here have been all uh, used except for the delete car current point. You see that only the active points have been saved by the txt file, but anyway, if at any time you can also remove some of the points and go on and try to refine that. So using this tool it's possible to have a better alignment and be able to align whatever uh, you want on your 3D model. Thank you.